<laughs> um, this is called Booty Calls. <laughs> Ophelia, my goldfish, judges me. She watches me with those droopy eyes and judges me. She thinks I don't see her, that I don't know she is watching the ins and outs of my life, that I'm not aware of the telepathic messages she sends out to all the other goldfish living in our building detailing all of my hookups. I used to move Ophelia from the room when I brought women over, but I felt her possessive size throughout the apartment. Eventually, I stopped bringing anyone home. I have no excuses and am in no mind to make any. It's true. I am conqueror of the fragile and victor of any and all readily available spoils. To be fair, it is not a difficult role to fill. Women want me to call them up in the middle of the night. They want me to come over and warm their beds, ease their insecurities, hold them close as they thrash against me, and ask how great they were afterwards. Last weekend was Morgan from Ireland with tattoos running up her thighs, Grace with the long black curly hair and full red lips, and Jennifer with gymnast-like flexibility, whose pug Betsy had to be put down the night before. Tonight, I will call Sarah Beth, the girl I met last night at the bar down the street. I'm curious to know what her short blonde locks look like tangled between my thick fingers. At the bar, she laughed at all of my jokes. Sometimes her giggles caught in the back of her throat, finally erupting like volcanic lava. I immediately wanted to know what other noises she could make. Sarah Beth doesn't pick up the phone when I call her at 11.16. I leave a casual message, something along the lines of, I know it's late, but I was up and thinking about you, wondering if you want to just hang out. Shoot me, a shoot me a line if you're just awake and restless as I am. She'll get back to me. 20 minutes later, Sarah Beth texts. She says that she's kind of busy right now, but I'm welcome to come over in an hour or so if I'm interested. I tell her I'll be by in a bit. Ophelia flutters her orange fins, gliding smoothly along the top of the tank. Her eyes follow me around the apartment as I stack and restack mountains of clothes piled around my bed. The art of the booty call requires a very specific dress code. I can't look like I'm expecting anything, so no cufflinks or cologne, but I can't look completely unappealing either, so no torn jeans and scuffed sneakers. I need to look approachable, comfortable, safe, but still desirable. I opt for a navy button-down shirt, blue jeans, my North Face jacket, and a pair of chucks. Clean underwear? Check. Socks with no holes? Check. Teeth brushed? Check. Deodorant? Check. Two rubbers, just in case. Check and check. Okay. I ring the bell for apartment number 327. A few minutes later, Sarah Beth hurriedly comes down, her cheeks flushed and her hair piled up. Sorry about that, she says. I was just finishing up a project for school with one of my classmates, perfect timing. I smile indulgently and tell her not to worry about it. She ushers me in and I watch the way her hips swing as I follow her up the three flights of stairs to her slightly ajar door. Putting his shoes on, there's a man perched on the couch right when we walk in. Hey, how's it going? I'm Joe. Hey, Eric. I shake the offered hand and we size one another up. I grin. I win. Sarah Beth walks to the door and tells me she'll be right back. I'm just going to walk Joe out. Make yourself at home. While she's gone, I take her in, I take in her well-decorated apartment. The drapes are pulled back and the windowsills are lined with different sized lit candles. She has extra racks of clothing in the living room, what could only be explained as overflow from a packed closet. Hanging in the corner are lacy bras, drying. A heavy wooden coffee table has two purple stained goblets and an unopened bottle of cow on it. Sarah Beth lets the wine breathe some. The silky red kimono style robe she's changed into slightly shifts and the soft curves of her cleavage start to spill out. Deftly, she tightens her robe, pours the wine, and stares into my eyes as we click salute. Bad sex for life if you don't meet someone's eyes clinking glasses, she says. I thought it was bad sex for seven years. What's the difference, she laughs. Seven years, rest of your life, same, same. Sarah Beth giggles in bed. She squeals and moans too, but mostly she giggles. Her avocado green bed spread is wrapped around my waist, and beneath me she is giggling. It is almost like she is in hysterics. I'm not sure if I'm excited or terrified by it, but I continue my rhythm undeterred. When she finally reaches orgasm, Sarah Bell's face is tomato red. Her eyes roll slightly back, and her body shudders determinately, somewhat like an Uzi. 
<laughs> Back at home, Ophelia swims around her tank to greet me. I didn't feed her before I left, and she has altered her expression to a more innocent one, hoping to while out some flakes of food. Once she is fed, Ophelia regards me much the same as she usually does. If Ophelia had eyebrows, she'd forever look at me with one of them constantly raised. I take a shower, think about Sarabeth's legs wrapped around my ankles, but am immediately distracted by the memory of her red face gasping and giggling at the same time. Tomorrow, I will call either Renee, a nomadic poet in town for the next few days, or Felicia, the preschool teacher I met at my, niece, my niece's fourth birthday party two weekends ago. Ophelia blinks at me, nuzzling against the glass, ready for bed. <laughs>